So let's start with the next Nexus. And it's pretty ironic because even though it's the parent company of Android, Google has some of the worst naming schemes for its devices on the planet. I mean, looking at the different models right now, for someone who wasn't in the tech community, you'd probably have no idea which one was better than the other. So we'll just call it the Nexus 2016. But this smartphone should be absolutely incredible. It should release around October time if the past smartphones are anything to go on, but some of the rumors have begun to swirl that it'll be released August to September time. But either way, it's very soon. We should be expecting two models, with a 5 inch and a 5.5 inch display, pretty similar to this year, but this time hopefully both of them will support 2K panels. And on top of that, as you would expect, top of the line specifications. By this time, the Snapdragon 821 will be out there, so fingers crossed that will be featuring in the smartphones. The Google might decide to separate them a little bit with the larger model, both being manufactured by HTC this time around, but with the larger model hopefully boasting more significant specs, maybe 6GB of RAM as opposed to 4 in the smaller one, and then separate them in terms of price. It seems like a sensible stretch to me. One of the most exciting things about this is that these will be the first two phones to feature Android 7.0 Nougat. And while Google hasn't exactly been totally clear on the full benefits of this, it's nice to see, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of optimizations, whether it be performance, battery life, and extra little features. Now next up, we have the iPhone 7, which is actually the 14th iPhone, but I'll save this for a different video. But essentially, the iPhone 7 is going to be releasing in September time, just like pretty much every other iPhone before it. And we're expecting really big things. Not only will there be the iPhone 7, the iPhone 7 Plus, but rumors are swirling of an iPhone 7 Pro, which could technically end up being the iPhone 7 Plus, but we're expecting a big divergence in specifications. Also with the iPhone 6 Plus and iPhone 6S Plus, Apple totally ditched its idea of a retina display being the sort of highest pixel density that you ever need, because you know they are 401 ppi respectively. And so we're actually expecting an even higher resolution display on the next new iPhones for crispy video, and maybe even above 720p in the YouTube app. The rumor mill is pretty convinced that Apple is going to slash the two antennas from the back of its smartphone, which should give it a little bit of a cleaner look. We're also pretty sure that the 3.5mm headphone jack is gone for good, which is sad news. But as a little bit of a plus point, Apple should be bundling in an adapter which connects the lightning port to any headphone you want, and apparently will also include an amp and a DAC, so you will get better sound quality out of that than you would natively through a 3.5mm jack. If Apple wants to keep up with current trends in smartphones, and don't forget it'll be stuck with the iPhone 7 body for two years now, it'll probably have to go for an edge-to-edge -edge display, which will be very cool to see. And we're hoping that they'll ditch the 16GB model once and for all, and introduce a 256GB on the upper end. The iPhones also tend to set the standard when it comes to mobile photography. Pretty much every time a new iPhone is released, that bar is raised, so we're pretty excited to see what happens here. And then we have my future wife the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, which should be releasing on August the 2nd, so right round the corner. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, where's the Note 6? Well Samsung's actually ditched that altogether, just to bring its sort of Note series in line with its S series, which actually makes a lot of sense because it was really confusing before. Now we pretty much know what this phone's gonna look like, and the specs are all but confirmed. We're talking 6GB of RAM, a 5.7 inch 2K panel, and a Snapdragon 821 or 823 processor, so pretty beefy components. There was also a leaked video showing the stylus actually being waterproof, which does kind of suggest that the whole phone will be at least IPX68 waterproof, which is a big plus for the Note series. And if the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge are anything to go by, Samsung's learned their lesson, and they'll include an SD card in the Note 7. A couple of websites actually reported a potential Note 7 Lite, which has a Snapdragon 820, 4GB of RAM, and just isn't quite as powerful as the actual Note 7. But to be honest, if Samsung's trying to simplify its smartphone lineup, that would seem like a really odd move, so I'm not too convinced. So jumping a little bit forward, we've got the Xiaomi Mi 6, and this is one that I'm personally really, really excited about. The Mi 5 released earlier this year was just a knockout success. It delivered everything that people have been wanting the Asian manufacturers to do practically since they started. Offer flagship components, build quality, which was something that they've been missing out for so long, and a good screen for that price that they tend to offer their phones at. 
and the Mi 5 really achieved. It was a Snapdragon 820, 4GB of RAM, and a beautiful 1080p display, all at almost a half of the cost of basically every other flagship smartphone out there. And the Mi 6 is probably going to be no different. For $400, you could get yourself a Snapdragon 823, 6GB of RAM, and a 2K display. But of course these are all rumours and no one really knows for sure. But we're expecting the release date to be either the end of this year or pretty early next year. So fingers crossed on that one. Now the last one on my list is probably the least known of the bunch. And this is the Li Echo LE Max 3. Now Li Echo is a brand that's kind of just sprung up out of nowhere. Two years ago, nobody knew who they were, and even now, they're not exactly a household name, but they've done some incredible things. Their phones are spec'd out to the max. These phones are literally spec monsters, and while they don't practically translate one to one because their optimization isn't amazing, they are improving, and I'm expecting with the LE Max 3, they're gonna have an optimized, up-to-date, and spec-rich monster. With the phone pegged for a Q2 2016 release, your expectations are probably pretty high, and this phone will not disappoint. The rumours, which are pretty vague right now, have it that it will have a Snapdragon 830, 8GB of RAM, and a 4K 5.5 inch screen, which right now is pretty like, that's, it's pretty mind blowing. But of course that is a bit into the future, so by then we could be having our Galaxy S8s and our HTC 11s, so who knows. But anyway guys, that's it from me for now. Are there any other phones that you guys are really excited about? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to slap that like button and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.